Hedge, hedge, tube dwellers. Welcome to Dota 2! And a proper introduction. Uh, this is my profile. Guess I'm not going to see it too much. Wow, I just now recently realized I am quite behind in the losses. Oof! Right in a kisser. We're going to cast a random pub match today. I don't know anything about the match that I'm getting ready to watch other than the lineups. I did go as far as to uh, uh, scrutinize the lineups and make sure that the teams at least made some sense so it's not like a, a five carry team or anything like that. Uh, aside from that though, no scrutinization, no foreknowledge whatsoever on what this match entails. Uh, let's go ahead and skip this little draft section. Let's get right to the beginning of the game. Alright, here we go. Just getting into uh, people picking. Let's see. I don't. I didn't actually look. I think this is an all pick. Yeah, it looks like they're coming out ha haphazardly. So it's got to be either like single draft or least played or all pick or something where you you all just choose your hero whenever whenever you're on him, whenever you want him. Uh, so being a pub game, I'm not going to pay too much attention to these player names. If you see yourself in here, sweet, give me a shout out. Um. But we're just going to look at the heroes. So uh, we don't quite have all the heroes yet. I'll uh, do at least a hero lane assign rundown. Once we've got it. Um, and you know what? I already lied. I said that the only thing I looked at was uh, hero composition, team composition. To make sure that we didn't have some kind of, you know, five carry pub. Uh, there's also an option in the filter for skill level. And uh, I think there's a very high, a high, and a medium, and, and like one, one other setting. I think I chose high. I didn't, I didn't choose the highest bracket there was there. Uh, I have no idea how that's calculated, though. I don't know if that goes by rank of your account or by some uh, hidden matchmaking stat. I assume there is a hidden matchmaking stat, but that's something I've never really researched. So uh, I will refrain from speaking about it as though I know, because I do not. The horn is blown. The creeps have spawned. There are still a couple dire heroes that haven't been picked. It looks like we have a few delinquent. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get past this pause as well. Okay, the final picks have come out. It looks like the final one was actually a random. That's kind of interesting, that they uh they took their sweet time putting the team composition together, and then the last guy just randomed. Marana. Picking up an illusion right off the bat. She laughed right before that. I was going to say she uh, probably laughed at actually a decent random. A second support was needed by the team. If he had random to carry, then uh, their farm priority would probably be all messed up. So as, uh, as far as hero rundowns go, we've got... It looks like a tri-lane developing on bottom with a Disruptor, Marana, Juggernaut, and uh, even a Vengeful Spirit. Okay, so let me take that back. This is almost certainly not going to be a tri-lane. Uh, Marana's probably only hanging around, I'm sorry, it will be a tri-lane, but it's not going to be a quad lane. Marana's probably only hanging around to see if she can use a sacred arrow to get an early gank on this lane. And it looks like she will back off, seeing that they're taking their sweet time getting to lane. Uh, in mid, we're going to have a Marana versus Batrider, though Marana's a little late getting to the mid lane. She spent some time down here looking for the gank. Disruptor is still very questionably positioned, although they see him. He's not going to be able to get anything real special. The Static steel will, Field will hold him there. Blade Fury instantly on Husker. The Magic Missile from the Vengeful Spirit will lock him down just long enough to get it. A Brain Sap from the Bane is not enough to pick up the Juggernaut. And now the Bane's in trouble. The Sports are going to chase him off. I doubt they'll get the kill. Oh, there's a Magic Missile and he's trapped inside of a Static Field. They should get this kill. Disruptor's got to back off though, so that's going to split their damage in half. And again, the Brain Sap takes him really close to dying, but doesn't quite get him there. Vengeful Spirit doesn't have any more mana left. The Bane will get away, barely. And uh, we'll finish running down the uh, lineup. Uh, the only one left is that uh, Razor for the Radiant is going to be a solo off lane. So for the Dire, we have uh, dual lanes. We have a Bane Husker in bottom. Of course, the uh, Batrider mid. And then we have a Lena Ursa top, which is kind of interesting. Um, I still see dual lanes in most of my games. I don't see uh, a whole lot of tri-lane action. That really makes me wonder what that filter means and what high skill means. Because uh, I assumed that there would be a point where dual lanes would totally fall off. If you have the finesse, and uh, if your supports, I should say, have the finesse, 
then uh, you can really use this safe lane. You can use pulls here to pull more out of this lane. Oh, Marana uh, with the rotations actually up on the top lane took out Lena. I'm sorry that I missed it. A double damage rune allowed it to happen. I'm sure a sacred arrow was involved. It looks like uh, her leap. It does have a snare. Um, actually, hold on. Is it a snare? No, it's a, a movement speed bonus. So it just gives her a movement speed. For a second there, I was thinking that it actually uh, snares the enemy that you land near. But no, that's not so. I must be thinking of the Void's time walk. The Dire are going to contest the pool a little here. There is a double stack, and it looks like that pool got wiped out pretty quick. I have no clue how these Dire creeps were pulled back from the tower. It was probably just Juggernaut attacking them, then running away. Husk putting a little bit of uh, harassment onto the vengeful spirit there. So far the farm is going the way of the dire though by all means this dual lane setup is working out well for them. Uh, Marana rotating and getting a kill isn't ideal but uh, the Ursa doubling up the next highest person on farm. He's staying in lane and it looks like one on one with the Razor he's actually doing really good. A light strike array will hit from Lena and they reciprocate a kill and it's on a solo on the Razor. Ursa is pretty low but that was a beautiful kill. It's kind of tough to land those light strike arrays sometimes. Lena just made it look easy. Coming in from the side. Even dying, uh, Razor's keeping up in the farm. He's actually at the top of the Radiant side, so I should be watching Jug here. And as I watch him, he gets a couple last hits, but uh, he hasn't been doing his job as well as he possibly could have been. There has been a good bit of action down here, but this is a tri-lane on a dual lane, so this dual lane should be uh, yeah, pretty bullied. They should be bullied out of the lane whenever the Jug needs it. And if he's not getting the last hits because of pressure, then the support should be responding to neutralize that pressure. We'll keep an eye on this uh, farm grid as it goes higher and higher. Oh, wow. Uh, Firefly from the Batrider is going to chase Lena down. Lena gets an invisibility rune, though, and she's continuing to the lane. It looks like she wants to set up another gank. Husker and Bane are totally unawares. The static field lands from the Disruptor. There's even a Blade Fury. This looks like it's death on the Husker. A short-range arrow with the sure shot gets it. And Bane's going to save his own skin by locking down Marana temporarily. Another great gank. So far, the Radiant are working this bottom lane. And I've got to say that Marana is working amazing rotations. I would normally say that rotating off of mid this early doesn't normally assure you a kill, and uh, it does lack some on farm. It does slow down your farm and your experience gain, but if you can get a kill when you rotate, then obviously that's to an advantage. Killing heroes greater than killing creeps. Rays are going to contest the pool a little bit on this top lane. And the bottom lane for the Radiant needs a pull out now. They're way up. Jug doesn't want to have to see us up here by the river. Disruptor, it looks like he's going to be able to save himself with the static field. Juggernaut's going to run in again. He's got a Blade Fury. He wants to use it, but he's using it too late. Uh, if he would have used it a little in closer, oh, they might still get a kill. Nah, the Juggernaut's getting low. And a matter of fact, that damage over time, the Disruptor goes down. The Husk is getting nasty with his passive, but the Vengeful Spirit's just able to put it together. And her Magic Missile may let her get a kill on the Bane as well. Taking some creep hits, though. She's going to have to back out. The Enfeebles got her barely doing any right-click damage. The Bane can't turn anything around there, though, so it's going to be a Husker for a Disruptor. By all means, Radiant. Still coming out with the victory there. Definitely a better kill for them. And uh, as the Husk comes back out... Uh, did I also miss a kill on the Ursa? Ursa didn't die, did he? No, Ursa didn't die. He just went home. He must have been low. He's out of regen. He had to make a trip to the well. And it looks like the Razor's calling missing all day long. They want to be aware of this Lena and this Ursa. The Bat Rider taking a note out of Marana's book. He's going to start some rotations of his own. He is level 6. He's got the Flaming Lasso. Let's jump off of these uh, last hits for just a second. Um, the hero level, so uh, Marana, Razor, Ursa, Bat Rider, all level 6 so far. Uh, a lot of the mains from the various uh, the various waves. Or I should say the, uh, the solos. Ursa's basically been solo. Um, there is a net worth. What is it? Why? That's right. The net worth going heavily the way of the dire. So all that stuff I said about finesse and being able to pull more out of a lane. Um, it's all for naught. Oh, there's a lasso. What in the hell? The glimpse. Ah, uh, he lassoed, but a glimpse broke his lasso. So a uh, note to all bat riders. You can't really dive on uh, Disruptor. If he gets that glimpse off, just don't lasso. <laughs> 
Batrider's gank attempt will be foiled. So uh, even though the Dire are coming out with the net worth, they're not coming out with the hero kills, at least not in the numbers that the Radiant are achieving. Looks like Batrider's going to spend some time. Oh, nice. He just popped a haste rune. Beautiful escape from him. He was going to sit here and uh, kill up their jungle, farm up their jungle. But uh, it ended up going a different way as he escaped with the Disruptor trying to uh, static field him. Now Mirana and Razor onto Ursa on the top lane. Damage Link is going to take Ursa's damage down to a uh, more manageable number. And it's going to skyrocket the Razors. They're not going to get the uh, arrow off or anything though, so they're not going to be able to lock Ursa down and take him out. Return of this bottom lane, the Husker. He's going to be able to easily dodge this Static Field. Another Blade Fury, though. A Glimpse is actually going to bring the Husker back. Most of that Blade Fury was a whiff, but they might still pick the Husker up for it. I was just going to make a comment about how lacking his farm is, and another death really hurts. Husker is a Snowball hero, and as such, uh, Reverse Snowball also works. If he doesn't get the Snowball, he is not a factor, and it looks like that's the way he's going to be... Uh, panning out in this game. Now Alina coming down. Laguna Blade takes the Juggernaut straight out. So as I talk about Husker being a non-factor, we look up at the Juggernaut's farm and it's not great either. After a couple deaths, maybe the uh, carries on this lane specifically are going to have somewhat comparable net worths. We have four on this lane. The three that were originally, or I should say the two that were originally, including Lena, and now an invisible Batrider as well. The Batrider's got his lasso. He's looking for something. Marana Farms, safely in the mid lane. Batrider finds the Disruptor. Is he going to jump on him alone? He should be pinging it out. The members of his team should be rotating, but they're not going to go for it. How much longer do we have on this Invis rune? It's got about a quarter of its time left. Marana, rotating back down. She knows that something's amiss. Batrider hasn't been in his lane for a minute. We have four on three down here. Marana's going to fire an arrow. It looks like it will connect with the Bane. The Batrider's out of invisibility and into the Firefly. A static field and a Blade Fury are going down. Bane blows up. Lena gets off her stun, but she dies as well. There's going to be a lasso onto the VS. There's a lot of fire there, but I'm not sure that it's going to pan out. Nope, the VS is going to escape, and a Glimpse is going to pull the Batrider right into the danger zone. Response from a Razor with the TP is going to uh, actually allow the Juggernaut to get a kill, but ensure that that gank goes right back on the Dire. So we have a nice kill lead kicking out here in the beginning for the Radiant. The Radiant are playing the laning phase beautifully. And uh, I would go as far as to say that they've definitely won the bottom lane. And uh, they're doing comparable in the top. The Razor, actually, this Ursa's farm is a little bit ridiculous. 56 last hits. I have to assume some of those are going to be from the jungle, but uh, he's got, I mean, the net worth shows it. He's got some ridiculous net worth. Juggernaut's actually making a, making a game of catching up with him. Having gotten a few hero kills. But uh, he's, not, he's not even in the ballpark of Ursa right now. Razor's going to return to contest a little bit more, and it looks like Jugger's going to go to the mid lane. There is an arrow. It hits a creep, though. No gank potential on the Bat Rider, unless that arrow lands, or unless an Omni Slash comes out, which it's on cooldown. Bat Rider's just going to play defensive here. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, Lena throwing that stun. Wow. I guess uh, if you don't throw it, you don't hit it, right? Even going to put a very aggressive ward down in the lane to keep an eye on things. And she's going to keep picking on the Disruptor. The Disruptor can't be here. Husk is going right to the tower. He's going to put up a static field. The Husker is not going to move into it, though. The Razor teleports again, and with an ultimate, he might be able to reciprocate something. No, the Leap will come out of the Husker. There's also a Gripped from the Bane. Razor explodes. And the Dire make a move to pull some of this advantage back their way. Hero kills are going to be necessary because, as well as Ursus farming, if they keep dying and don't take any uh, any kills on the enemy, don't slow down their farm, then uh, they're going to be in a bad way. Still the Dyer's move to make something happen here, though. By the time Ursa rotates in, he's going to be doing work. But we're not at that point yet. He's still happy farming, and rightly so. Magic Missile comes out on Bane. The Blade Fury is going to be enough if he just keeps up. And it is, and Omni Slash is also spent. It looks like it gets stopped early, though. 
Uh, the Bat Rider now in with the Flaming Lasso. The Glimpse is gonna break it, though. A static field. Gonna make him a little bit nervous, but not really land home anyway. A Flame Break. Gonna knock him back still. Another Magic Missile. This aggression from the Dire is going to result in something. Husker, ready to suicide for the kill on Juggernaut. He does. The Bat Rider also goes down. This time to the Disruptor. Everybody down here getting in on the love. Marana came in at the end there. I didn't really see her impact, but uh, I think she probably got an assist. No, I don't necessarily see an assist. There were uh, exactly one kill. I was going to say a couple kills. There was exactly one kill, just the Juggernaut that went the way of the uh, Dire there. I think the Husk was up for that kill, so experience-wise that helps him out a lot. But he died again, and that is damaging. Smoke and Overpower used on Ursa. He's going in for his level 10 Roshan. He's got his Vlads up. He's got four points in the Fury Swipes. It can and will happen. Alina Stun, meanwhile, hitting on the Radiant team. A lot of damage coming out to him. Laguna Blade will take the Disruptor down. It looks like the Vengeful can get away. No, the Grip is just in time. Where's the arrow, Lena? The Creeps are blocking her. She can't get an arrow off. And the Vengeful Spirit falls as well. The Dire are far from beaten. They're going to show some of that to the Radiant. Starting with Ursa taking Roshan. He's got the Aegis now. He's rotating mid. Husker's in a kind of bad way. He's getting damage stolen. But the Razor breaks his own link. He's got his ultimate up, but he's being skittish with it. He doesn't want to take too much of this uh, damage from these three to the face. With Marana there, they could probably be aggressive on this so long as the Razor's ultimate is up. But now the three on the Dire are thinking about uh, turning it right back around. They say we are strong. Jug coming in from the side. That's going to switch the uh, numbers Radiant up here. Ursa, working on that mid tower. Radiant no fear holding an Aegis. Is this a Moonlight Shadow? No, this is an invisibility rune. Marana looking to set up a good arrow. They don't know she's there. If she gets a close arrow, she can almost be sure that it hits, and she can follow it up with a Star Storm. A great way to combo some damage out. We're now dealing with four on the Radiant side here. And uh, they are showing that map presence. Middle tower goes down. Ursa backs off. Batrider goes over to the jungle. Having died, he's a little bit worried about uh, stagnating his farm. So he's going to go to the jungle until he picks up his blink. He's very close to it. 15 minute blink. Uh, he's not quite there yet. He's 100 gold or so out. 15 minute blink is a solid timing though. Uh, especially since he already has a boot. Upgrade built. A boot recipe. Sacred Arrow is going to miss its mark. Husker being a little bit too vigilant back there behind the tower. They are being very careful here. They know there are four out by the Radiant, and they know that the Radiant may try to dive on this tower. Top tower has fallen. Ursa now to the top tower, taking it down quick. Like I said, when he gets involved, he's going to be doing work. This net worth shows it. Let's switch back over to the last hits, though. Ursa, my god, you Radiant's monster. Disruptor's going to try to respond to this. It looks like just the TP is going to scare Ursa off. Uh, with that mob wave, though, he probably could have went on that and made the Disruptor's life hell. The Disruptor could have got away from him. With Glimpse and Static Field, there's really no way that Ursa alone can pursue that. In comes the Radiant with power! Blade Fury to keep him safe! The Dire, though, is four! Focus Marana down quick! And now the Juggernaut's in a bad way. He got a lot of damage done to Lina, but it wasn't enough. No kills are picked up, and the Dire turn it right back around on the Radiant. Razor's got to be careful now. He's got crazy movement speed. Race car like movement speed, but if he doesn't move, oh man, this is not good. It looks like the Dyer haven't quite spotted it yet. There they go. It's too much. The brain sap lands, a couple flame arrows. And the razor goes down fast. Another tower taken, so three tier one towers within what? Two game minutes? Given that that, uh, that mid tier one fell a little while ago. An invisibility going to be picked up by the Bat Rider. Great way for him to initiate. Uh, if he didn't have the Blink Dagger. He does have the Blink Dagger, though, so he can do whatever he wants now. Jug gonna return to lane and try to pick this farm up, but now he is probably the carry in the game that's lacking the most. Dyer are gonna spend a little bit of time in the Radiant Jungle. Their carriers are gonna be happy with what they find there. Husker's still in a rough way. All those deaths early hurt. A Magic Missile. It's gonna put him in a bad way. A swap. He's right in the middle of some Radiant 
damage. Juggernaut's gonna focus on the Lena. She goes down fast. Ursa complicates this for the Radiant, though. They can't fight this straight up. Husker, he's low health, so he's spitting damage. Another Blade Fury. Looks like it's just not gonna take the Ursa down. The right clicks go right through the Blade Fury's magic immunity. And now the Dire are left to clean up. Even the Vengeful Spirit. We have a three for one. Lena's the only one that went down on the side of the Dire. Blown up early by that jug. There's a lot of low health. It looks like the Bat Rider's even going to get the Disruptor. That makes it a fourfer. However, oh, the Bat Rider! He's in the uh, Static Storm, I believe is what uh, the Disruptor's ultimate is called. Doesn't quite kill him, though. Brings him low. Locks him in with that Static Field. A great combo by the Disruptor, but it's just not enough. Ursa remaining in the jungle. Still holding Aegis. The beast bulges. It gets even bigger. Lena's got an opportunity to find some solo farm up here on the top. That'll be great for uh, her. It looks like she has no problems getting her items up, even with the uh, wards that she's been throwing around. Now some ancient stacks for Mr. Asa. As his farm continues to skyrocket, he has a gross advantage. This net worth, this is out of hand. Uh, probably even worse than the fact that Ursa is a monster on the net worth is that uh, the Radiant's highest is actually a Vengeful Spirit. Now, the Vengeful Spirit is an agility hero. She has some potential to carry, but they're not really playing her like a uh, carry hero. So it looks like she's building the mech, and that means that her money's not really going to go to effectual items, at least at least not uh, personally effectual items. Her money's going to go to team effectual items. And I'm sure they don't quite have the uh, omnipresence to know. Wow, it just totally split. Bane even has a higher net worth. These tier 1 towers have done an amazing job for the Dire. The Radiant are in a bad way, and they're going to need to return some tier 1 tower kills if they want to pull this back. They need to get gold, not just on one hero. They need gold for everybody, because they are in a terrible spot. Batrider playing some chicken with a couple of the Radiant heroes. There are more Dire here, but there are Radiant reinforcements coming in. An Omni Slash is going to allow the Juggernaut to take Alina out, but now there's some complication with the Bane's Nightmare. There's a uh, Flaming Lasso onto the Juggernaut's uh, Blade Fury. He's not going to take any damage from the fire, but he is still disabled by the Flaming Lasso. Ursa's involved, though. The Radiant, no, they've got to run. Ursa can't be touched. The Aegis was never popped. He instead just uh, lost it to uh, duration. It expired. And this is probably going to become a familiar scene for the Radiant. The Dyer's net worth is just ungodly. Bane keeping up with, Bane and Lena keeping up with the likes of Juggernaut, only a couple hundred gold behind him. The Radiant need to get a lot done. A vengeful spirit gets caught off in the middle lane, Juggernaut runs towards her with a procession of dire following and she pays no heed. Husker starting to get a little bit of snowball himself, he does have an armlet. Helm of the Dominator. Uh, he's going to be able to start farming really fast. We see he's jumped up to the second on the net worth tab. So uh, I said he needs the snowball, but uh, I guess if you start the snowball late, it still builds momentum as you roll it. That's what we're seeing here. The Husker, even though he's a little bit behind a snowball that he could have acquired, could have achieved, he is going to farm a plenty and get the snowball going now. The Radiant have to be really careful. They're trying to get everything they can out of the uh, smaller camps over in the side of their jungle. Meanwhile, though, the Dire totally dominate their greater jungle. If any of them were to try to rotate over, they would surely be ganked quick. Dire keeping that bottom lane pushed, too, so they have access to that jungle. Now Batrider taking his turn. Looks like the Radiant have a gank on their mind. It is just the Bane. A swap's gonna happen. The magic missile stops the grip. That was a silly attempt from the Bane. Juggernaut's spin finishes him off. However, the return is coming. Vengeful needs to get out. Oh, she's too slow. The leap happens. Snare. The health is low enough on Husker that he is doing disgusting work. The Razor's going to get blown up as well. There's a three for one. The Radiant do get the Bane, but they return two kills. And look at this. The Bane's net worth tying within 100 gold of the Juggernauts, the hardest carry on the Radiant team. This is a steep hill to climb. 
It's going to be a tough match to come back from. The Dyer have a Rax on their mind, and who's to complain? Nobody can argue with the power they've uh, they've got going here. Roshan especially. Jesus, that tower damage. The glyph will be popped. An ulti combo goes down from the Disruptor. It catches about everybody in the static field. They're all silenced and taking plenty of damage. Ursa does not have an Aegis. He's so close, but his invisibility will save him. Shadow Blade, just what he needed. Meanwhile, Husk is going to finish off the tower, and uh, the Juggernaut's uh, Omni Slash is going to bring him low enough that a glimpse back ensures his fate. The Husker does go down. That helps a lot, actually. I think the Juggernaut got that kill. Okay, it doesn't really help that much. Never mind. Looking at the net worth, not that helpful. Juggernaut still in a bad way. And he's in the best of ways on the Radiant team. Lane's pushed on all side. We now have an invisible Ursa coming right up to the Razor. The Razor can't get out of this. Too much damage, too fast. There's a Basher on Ursa now. I've said this before, I think, in an Ursa game that I played. Uh, Basher with Ursa specifically, with the uh, super fast attacks. Uh, gives Ursa's overpower almost an assured stun. It is basically a natural stun. Within an overpower, chances say that you will get a stun in one of the attacks. What is it, six? Is it six okay. attacks that happens during overpower? Yeah, six attacks. And at a 25% chance, that's, uh, that's an assured stun. Of course, with uh, RNG, you never really know. The way stun chances go up and down, I guess it's a little bit more uh, constant, a little bit more reliable than is the alternative true random, but still, you never know. Natural stun's nice though, Ursa being able to stun at all, I mean his, his forte is huge ridiculous damage and short bursts, giving him a stun in there, whew, nasty. I don't want to deal with it. So by the hero kills, this looks like it might be a kind of close game, but the net worth tells a whole different story. Uh, Ursa's so far ahead, he doubles up the Juggernaut, and he got that advantage early, and it is leading to him being able to just build on the advantage. A Sacred Arrow, it's going to fall just short. It was close on the Bane. There is a leap in from uh, the Bat Rider. Um, I'm not sure exactly what he got. We got a lot of ultimates going off here. Some are going to be locked down. We actually have uh, Lena about to drop. She is going to die in the Disruptor ulti. Uh, but far and away, the hit points of the Radiant are taking the most beating. There are a lot of low dire heroes. As a matter of fact, the Batrider goes down. Marana now gripped by the Bane. Husker and Bane are going to be caught. It's a two for three. That's a surprisingly good trade considering the state Radiant's of this game. Radiant had a good fight there. Uh, dire were a little bit piecemeal and uh, not necessarily all initiating together and not focusing their efforts. Nevertheless, they're still powerful enough that they're going to take a tier 2 at the back end of this. There are only two up from the Radiant, so that was technically a win on the side of the Dire. It's just uh, a surprising... What is this? The Bane Nightmares the Ursa, troll face on. Uh, he's just going to leave him there, hoping that the Radiant will catch him, saying, Nana Nana Boo Boo, even if you guys get him, you can't... You can't stop us. That may have actually been bait, honestly. If the Radiant came out for that, they may have... Uh, counter-initiated and turned Dyer's it on its head. Top tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower going down to a catapult. Carty the catapult? No wait, Carty is a uh, courier, isn't he? Disruptor. Understands the state of the game. Puts a very defensive ward up to help watch the jungle. Maybe watch a little bit of action down in that bottom lane, although it only catch rotations through here. Flanks, I should say. Oh, Disruptor, you're in a bad spot, my guy. Bane knows it too, you're trying to ward and it's a respectable effort, but you gotta do it with teammates, you can't go out alone. Marana with the salvage though, she's gonna shoot in a sacred arrow, Bane's locked down, a static field goes up, they don't know that the Earth is here. The slam, the overpower, it's too much, my god, double kill off the bat, it's Ursa versus three and it doesn't even matter. There's a Blade Fury, maybe the Juggernaut can escape, no, there will be no escape. Bane does end up dying in that, but he is the only casualty on the dire side, and it is a team wipe on the Radiant. That is more like what I expected to see in the last team fight. Maybe that last team fight made the Radiant think that the game was a bit more even than it really is. It is not at all even. This Ursa Assault Curious now 
Yeah. This is nasty. And it got nasty fastly. This is some hella farm for a nurse in under 30 minutes. He's uh, close to six slotted. You could argue that uh, the Aegis can't be a part of a six slot and that uh, the Vladimir's is not really an in-game item. Nevertheless though, he has got the farm. They're gonna try to double racks this. It doesn't look like the Radiant can stop them, although with Juggernaut's respawn, they are back up as five. Wow, the distance of that leap. The Glimpse back's gonna try to save Razor, but it's not fast enough. The Husk just puts out too much damage too quickly. And uh, that is the name of this team composition, damage quickly. Uh, even both of their supports are single target nukers. They're not team fight heroes at all. But uh, it doesn't matter, they've just got too much damage. They just do everything too fast. When a team fight starts, they've got two or three heroes killed before the Radiant can even start to put their combos together. As good as they may be. A couple low health heroes over here may look tempting. Marana's gonna try it with an arrow. God, Lena's close. It's not gonna happen though. There's just too much support on her. And Urn even is gonna bring her right back up. <laughs> Marana defiantly. Telling the enemies to eat arrows. She's having fun. That's all that matters. The Rax is happening quick. That mid and that bottom a grip. For no other reason than that it happens. Oh nice! A swap back from the Razor actually <laughs> doesn't break the grip. The Razor stays gripped. I didn't know that. That's that's funny. Tier 4 is going down. It looks like the Dyer are just going to go straight in for it. Their advantage is heavy enough that the Radiant can't do anything about this. Unless they take the Ursa down. Okay, the Aegis has popped. Husker's actually really low too. Ursa comes back up with full health though. Bane saves himself with a Nightmare. And uh, Husker looks like he got low by Armlet Toggle intentionally. And now he's just spitting his damage to try to end the game. Lena does go down. Uh, Glimpse is going to control the Ursa a little bit. Bane goes down as well. The Radiant with their last life of breath defiantly return as many kills as possible. And the grand total of as many as possible is two. Two kills down. Oh, a swap into the fountain. <laughs> as the Ancient blows up, Ursa dies to fountain damage. Nope. He survives. Barely see him peeking out around that flag. So there you go, a pub cast. Let me know if you guys like this. Uh, it's kind of not easy to find great games. As a matter of fact, this the Radiant kind of started out in the lead here, so uh, there was a little bit of back and forth in this game, but even this, it went pretty one-sided pretty fast. That Ursa farm for free, and then boom, took the game over. Uh, but let me know if you like this, and by all means, if you guys have a good game that you'd like me to cast, then uh, let me know one way or the other. You can leave me an offline Steam message. Uh, replays and Dota have a game ID. If you give me this ID, I should be able to search for it in uh, Dota and find it and, and so cast it. So let me know if you guys have one or even uh, comment your replay ID down below in this uh, YouTube video. And uh, hell, maybe I'll do it that way. You never know. That's going to be it for this one though, folks. Thanks for watching and see you later.